I'm, uh, good evening. This is Ribwane. Uh, I'm your teacher from 10 Times Better Generation School Ministries. Ministries headed by Senior Pastor Budeni. And ours is to equip the saints. And as we say, the theme for the year is that we move from this grace to the other. We are moving to a higher level. Uh, we are continuing with uh, what we've been teaching all along. This is the believer's affirmation. Um, with a twist of the year, uh, of the theme of the year, which is uh, moving to a higher level. Uh, we'll start off with the word and we'll get, um, and we'll start off with prayer and we'll get straight into the word. Let us all pray. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Father, for you and your word. You are one. We are thankful that, Father, when we have your word, we have you. We are thankful that, Father, indeed we grow from one level of grace and glory and victory to the other. We are part and parcel of the theme of the year and we say, Father, indeed we are moving to a higher level, a level we've never been in before. Because, Father, we are going to do your word earnestly and faithfully. We know that, Father, through trials of various kinds, your word will always see us through. Because we know that, Father, your word does not change. Your word, it is forever. Your word, Lord, it is forever settled in heaven. And we use that very same word that has settled heaven here on earth to settle our earthly issues, Father. We are thankful that, Father, we will be exercising heavenly dominion here on earth. Why so? Because we are made in your express image and in your likeness and the earth, Lord, you have given to us. And therefore, Father, we will exercise heavenly dominion here on earth. For as long as we are here, Father, we will make sure that, Father, the things they cut apart, the things they flow without hindrance and they be exactly, Father, as you wish them to be. I say we cast all our cares, all our concerns, all our issues, all our worries unto you. And we know that, Father, when they are there, they are in good hands. And we know that, Father, all our issues, everything that bugs us, Lord, it is in good hands. And you will sort it out, Father. And ours, Father, is to seek you first. You, you, your kingdom and your righteousness. And we know, Father, the rest shall be added upon. It is a no-brainer in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father, for you are good. You are faithful. Lord, how much we love you. We are thankful for today's word. And we know that, Lord, our lives, they will no longer be the same. Never, never, never. For we are growing, Father, from one level to the other. Moving to a new level, a higher level. Thank you for your word. Reveal your word for your children as you have planned. It's not me speaking, Father. But that which, Lord, you've prepared for your children. Help me, Father, to articulate it as you've prepared it. Not that which I wish to share, but that which, Father, you've prepared specially for your children. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. I won't waste any much of your time. Let's get straight to the word. Um, as you know, we are word-based and all we do is nothing but the word. We will start off um, in Matthew, um, Matthew 6.33. I think this was um, our key scripture for the initial session. Um, that was two weeks ago. It reads that, but first and most importantly, I think we've been preparing for the new year or we've been setting the tone for the year for the past two weeks. I want to remind you that um, we've set the tone. And we remind one another that, but first, firstly, 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 before anything else, before we get to anything else, the word of God says, firstly, and most importantly, seek. Amen. Strive after his kingdom and his righteousness. I want to remind you that before we get into other things starting in the new month, strive at make sure that what you seek first and importantly and most importantly above all other things is the kingdom of God and his righteousness 
We said that as the word says, his kingdom and his righteousness is his way of doing and being right. Therefore, what does it mean? We seek the way of doing things the God kind of way. It says further that the attitude and character of God, that is his righteousness. We aim at what? Seeking his attitude and character, having the attitude and the character of God. Why? In Genesis 1 verse 26, it says that, And God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, that man be like us. Therefore, if we are made in the express image and the likeness of God, it means that we are gods here on earth. What does that mean then? It means that we continue with creation where God has left it off. What do we do? We open our mouths and we speak because what? We are life-giving spirits. Made in his express image and likeness, I want to remind you that man, woman, boy, girl, you are a spirit being. And what is of the Spirit is that of seeking God. In all you do, you strive after, aim at making sure that you get His kingdom and His righteousness. You do things the way God does them, the attitude and character of God. We see that uh, Christ in His earthly walk, He would abandon everybody. He would slip away just to spend time with God in prayer. Where am I going? If you are to grow this year and move to that higher level, you have to sleep away. You have to make time for yourself and God. I know there's things that I love. For the things I love, I make time for them. And I know you do exactly the same. For the things you love, you slip away. I can tell you what I do. My spare time when I've got time, I like supercars. I like fast, powerful cars. In my spare time, I, I, I actually make time for it. I find time. And before you know it, I am there. I'm there at the dealer. I've made appointments. They're expecting me. And you know what I do? I go there, I drive it, I speak with it. Why? Because I know it's part of the future. Why? Because my faith is not dead, it is alive. I'm making the faith effective, going to the very thing that is physical. But what do I do first? First and most importantly, I seek first the kingdom of God. Instead of just seeking a way to have that pleasure for the body, I make time for prayer. I make time to be in communion with God because just like every other relationship, it needs sustenance. If there is no communication in a relationship, it's the beginning of the end of that relationship. If there is no communion, if there is no understanding, if there is no slipping away to spend time together, the relationship suffers. Whew. And it says that once you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, all these other things, they will be given to you also. It has no limitation as to what all these other things are. It says every other thing, it will be given to you also. Let me move forward. Let me let me not dwell here too much. John chapter 15, it reads that um, from a relationship perspective, from us growing into a higher level, from us moving from a prayerless or limited prayers, but to where we're having multiple prayers, to where we are slipping away to go and pray, to where we are making time for God constantly and constantly and constantly and forever being there, spending time with Him. We're not saying pray 24 hours. What we are saying is whenever you get a chance, pray. 
there you are communicating with God. Strengthens the relationship. When you seek him, there you will find him. And when you find him, you find his kingdom and his righteousness. And when you find his kingdom and his righteousness, things, all other things will be running for you. Because you are like God, you have the image of God, you're representing God. How then will things not follow you? Things will want to be associated with you because of the God in you. When you spend time with God, knowing your true identity and your potential, you become one with yourself. And that true image and character, and that which God says you are, John reads that uh, Jesus is the vine and we are the followers, we are the branches. It reads in chapter 15, I'll take you through from verses 1 to 11, I'll be quick there. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. That is my father. Every branch in you, as you maintain your relationship with God in prayer, that does not bear fruit. Every part of you that is not fruitful, it says that God takes it away. And every branch that continues to bear fruit, he repeatedly prunes it. So the more you spend time with God, the more God works on you. It continues further so that it says that, so that, it will bear more fruit, even richer and finer fruit. So when you are in God, staying in God, in fellowship in God, in prayer, God says, I will prune everything that is not fruitful in your life, that does not bear fruit. And I will prune that which is fruitful. That way it bears more fruit. That way, more of the things, they run after you because you're a resemblance of God. God wants you to grow from a level of not bearing much fruit to a level of bearing much fruit. And once you are bearing much fruit, he even prunes you that you become even more, you bear even more, even richer and finer. That is quality and that is the God of quality. Read verse 3 it reads, You are already clean because of the word which I have given you, the teachings which I have discussed with you. Ooh. The interesting one is verses 4. Communion, relationship. It says, Remain in me and I will remain in you. When we are seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, we are with God. We are communicating constantly in prayer. He says, remain in me, you being in me, God, and I will remain in you also. That way we are one. And just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without remaining in the vine, neither can you bear fruit. If we are not with God, we will not be able to bear fruit. But if we remain in him, he says, he will remain in us and we will bear much fruit fruit and he will prune us to make sure that all those branches that do not bear fruit he takes them away and he prunes those ones that are bearing fruit that way they bear much fruit reading along further he says remain in me i will remain in you just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without remaining in the vine neither can you bear fruit producing evidence of your faith unless you remain in me we say all the time that we are walking the faith walk, but we are disconnected from God. How do you walk the faith walk which without God? Because it doesn't work out that way. He says, unless you remain in me and I in you, your faith is not going to be effective. When you remain in God and God in you, you become more effective. Why? Because you acknowledge every good thing which is in you, in Christ. That's what the word of God says. He says, I am the true vine. Remain in me and I will remain in you. Just no branch can bear fruit by itself without remaining in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit producing evidence of your faith unless you remain in me. 
I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. For otherwise, apart from me, that is, cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. A seed without the soil cannot grow. A believer without God cannot have faith. If you don't spend time with God, then what faith are you having in? In who that you have no relationship with? There ought to be a relationship for faith to be effective. And if your relationship is not maintained, how then do you grow from one level to the other? I implore unto you to not be a mediocre Christian, to not be a mediocre believer, but to remain in God, to remain in Christ. Because without God, without Christ, you won't be able to bear any fruit. So don't be a carnal Christian. Don't be a Christian that goes to church on Sundays because it's a lifestyle at home. That's how things have been done for generations and generations. Wake up. Repent. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, that is, if we are vitally united and my message lives in your heart, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. But none of these things would be done for you unless you spend time with God in prayer, unless you remain in God, forget the miracle. How can you do it without the source? Because God is the source of our total supply. And he says that if, if there's conditions for this life, man, Christianity is a lifestyle. It's a way of life. We live life like this. Christianity is life. So don't mix things. Know that when you have God, you have all the other benefits. If you remain in me, you maintain the relationship with me. He says that if we are vitally united, when we pray, when you spend time in the word, you have whatever you ask, it will be done for you. I'm not going to go to the details of whatever you ask. It's personal. It's up to you what you ask. Ooh, verse 8. My father is glorified and honored by this when you bear much fruit and prove yourselves to be my true disciples. As much as it benefits you to bear fruit, the Lord is honored more, as Christ says, when you bear much fruit because it shows that you are being pruned constantly it shows that you are remaining in god and god is remaining in you <laughs> and then you will bear much fruit why because you have proved yourselves to be my true disciples that's what christ says i've loved you just as the father loved me remain in my love and do not doubt my love for you this is Christ speaking, don't doubt his love. If you keep my commandments and obey my teaching, you will remain in my love, just as I've kept my father's commandments and remain in his love. There's remaining here, you know. There's not coming and going. You stay there and be there in good times, in bad times. You stay there, you are prone constantly. You remain in His love. His love conquers all things. His love loves us while we were sinners. It continues to love the sinners. It reads further. Verses 10. If you keep my commandments and obey my teaching, you will remain in my love, just as I've kept my Father's commandments and remain in His love. I've told you these things so that my joy and delight may be in you and that your joy may be made full and complete and overwhelming. Joy is of the Lord. Joy is more than just a feeling. And it says that for us to attain this joy, 
if we remain in Him and allow His teachings to also remain in us, He will be in us also. If, as we say all the time, we prioritize first, and most importantly, to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, then we'll be fine. We've said a couple of times, and I want to remind you again, that life in the physical alone, it is tough. Life in the physical without the spirit, oh boy, what is that? You are dead. I want to give you something, or we want to leave you with something that is going to empower you today. We want to remind you that in the beginning, before all the time was the Word, the Christ and the Word was with God and the Word was God Himself. And He was continually existing in the beginning, co-eternally with God. The three have been together. The Word, Christ and God. All these things were made and came to existence through Him, the Word. And without Him, not even one thing was made that has come into being. In Him was life and the power to bestow life. And the life was the light of men and the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not understand it, or overpower it, or appropriate it, or absorb it, and is unreceptive of it. Taking you here is to remind you that we are nothing without the Word of God. If we implore and do all we do, Using the Word of God, we will get the results of the Word. We are rest assured that the Word of God sent out, it doesn't return void, it always produces after its own kind. We are rest assured that God and His Word, they are one. We are rest assured that if we take the Word as it says in John chapter 15, verses 4, that remain in me, I will remain in you. In verses 2 of the same, it says, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that continues to bear fruit, he repeatedly prunes, so that it will bear more fruit. That way, even richer and finer fruit. But we will only attain this if we do what the Word of God says. If we stay in the Word, not being visitors of the Word, I want to remind you that God in the beginning, He sent out His Word. He opened His mouth and He spoke that which He was full of in His heart. And He got the results of what He said. Because Him and the Word, they were in constant communication. They had a thing. They had a relationship. Something. Chemistry. Love was going on there. And if we have that love and that relationship and the communion with God, if we stay in Him and remain in Him and not be visitors. It says when we have Him, all these other things, they will be added upon. Believer, I want to remind you that we are not about visiting God. We are not about that life. We are about staying there and remaining there and being steadfast there, knowing and being confident that the Lord that has begun a good work in us, He will see it until the coming of Christ. Why John 1.1 1, 1 says in the beginning of time was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God Himself and nothing that was made was ever made without Him. In beginning your year, cast everything to God Spend time in the Word. Be in God with God in whatever you do. Your ways be the ways of God. Be 
because you are made in his express image and his likeness. And you need to exercise your godly given dominion here on earth. I'll take you through the miracle of Cana in the new week or in the next sermon. Whereby Christ turned the water into wine. But I just want you to be rest assured that the word of God does not return void. It always produces after its own kind. And as such as we are making today's confession based on that or the affirmation of moving from one level to the other. But through the word of God. As usual in wrapping up you repeat after me. Thank you Father. For first and most importantly. I aim at. I strive after my Lord. Your kingdom and your righteousness. Your way of doing and being right. Not my way. I seek after Lord, I strive after my Father, your attitude and your character. And I know that Father, when I have your attitude and character, all these other things, they follow me because I am attractive. I am full of you, Lord. I say, Lord, I give myself to you, Lord, completely to use me. And I say, my Father, you are the true vine and every branch in me lord that does not bear fruit i say take it away and every branch lord that continues to bear fruit prune it repeatedly lord that way i bear much more fruit that way, Lord, I'm even richer and I even bear finer fruit, quality fruit. I say, Lord, I've made the conscious decision to remain in you. That way you remain in me. So that, Father, I bear fruit constantly and always. Because I remain in you, my Father the vine and with that sword lord with that lord i say i am indeed moving into a higher level i am in a higher level of your grace and your glory and i will continue to stay there i am not a visitor of the kingdom but i stay there through difficult times through good times lord i remain in you fully and that is what i wish father my 2022 to be like and all the other years that come and i say lord as i've begun i've begun in you and i know that father my life it will no longer be the same i say never never lord to the glory and the honor of your name because you, Lord, you live and abide in me, both to do of your will and your good pleasure. I'm prosperous. I'm successful. I bear much fruit in all areas of my life. And Lord, I love you and I will remain you. I seek first, Lord, your kingdom and your righteousness in Jesus my today I love you Lord and I thank you for you are good Lord you are faithful I am Lord moving into a higher level and I know that by faith as I remain in you there is no doubt I have assurance that indeed the higher level it is mine amen um, this is Libwani, your teacher from 10 times better generation school ministries. This was uh, session number seven of the Believer's Affirmation. We hope you're blessed. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon for notifications.
That way you are notified whenever we make a new upload. Care to share the message? This is the fragrance of grace. We are moving to a higher level in 2022. They cannot be staying in the same level when we have God. No way, absolutely no way. There is growth in the Lord and that growth, it is yours in Jesus' mighty name. And lastly, God loves you very, very much and he's mindful of you. Remain in him and him in you. Amen. Have yourself a blessed week further. Amen and amen and amen.